Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about projectile motion. This is also known as 2D motion, and that's because we're dealing with motion in two dimensions, that is the X direction and the Y direction. So let's find out what we do right now. The first thing I'd like to do is split problems in the X axis and the Y axis. And that's for two reasons. Number one, in physics, you cannot do anything if you have the hypotenuse of a triangle, and that's because you need to use sine, cosine, tangent to break those vectors into their horizontal and vertical components. The second reason why is because we do something different in the x-axis versus the y-axis. For instance, in the x-axis, the acceleration is zero, and I can prove that because when you throw an object straight up in the air, does the object move left or right? No, of course not, and that's because the acceleration is zero for the x direction. And whenever you have an acceleration of zero, that means you can use this equation, velocity equals distance over time, which I'm only going to modify slightly. Instead of distance, I'm going to say delta x, because it's an x distance. And instead of velocity, I'm going to say vx, in other words, the x component of velocity. And then in the y-axis, we do a little bit more. We're going to write out the five kinematic variables V initial, V final, acceleration, time, and displacement in the Y axis. We know the acceleration will always be negative 9.8, and that's because we're talking about gravity here when we talk about projectile motion. And once again, the goal is if you know three of the five of these, then you can plug into any of the four kinematic equations that I talked about in my other video, and you can solve. One thing worth mentioning is that the time variable here is the only variable that's shared between the x-axis and the y-axis. Everything else is probably going to be different. So with that being said, let's go ahead and look at an example and start to see what I'm talking about. So let's say I decide to throw a ball and it's going to follow some kind of projectile parabola shape like this. I'm going to say that the ball is thrown with an initial speed of 10 meters per second and that's going to be at an angle of let's say 50 degrees. And I'm going to ask a bunch of questions for this problem. The first question, we'll say part A, is what is the peak height? So in other words, that's this height right here when the ball is at its peak. And to find that, you'll notice that we're talking about the y-axis. So I'm going to start with the y-axis for this problem. So for that, I'm going to write out v initial, v final, acceleration, time, and displacement. And if I ask you what's v initial, most of you will say 10 because that's the initial velocity. And for those of you who said that, you are wrong. And that's because the initial speed is not 10 because we want the y-axis velocity only. Which means if I want to find that, then I got to construct a right triangle as we often do in problems like this. So I'd say the hypotenuse is 10, the angle here is 50, and it's a right triangle. And now I can find Vx and Vy. Technically, I only need Vy right now, but I'm going to find both because we'll need Vx later. So if you remember what cosine is, the cosine of 50 degrees, cosine is always adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so the cosine of 50 is going to be adjacent, which is Vx, because it's next to the angle, and then divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. If I want to solve for Vx now, I just multiply both sides by 10, and Vx equals 10 cosine of 50 degrees. Now, I plug this in my calculator, and let's see what I get. I got Vx equals 6.43, and that's meters per second. And now if I want to find Vy, I just do the same thing, but for the Y component, I need sine of 50, and that's because sine is always the opposite over the hypotenuse, and we know that the opposite leg is Vy because it's opposite of the 50 degrees. So we would say that sine 50 is equal to opposite, which is Vy, divided by hypotenuse, 10, multiply both sides by 10, and Vy equals 10 sine 50. One thing I want you to pay attention to real quick is that the only difference between Vx and Vy is a sine versus a cosine term. In other words, you can save yourself a lot of time by saying if Vx is cosine, then Vy's gotta be the sine, Keep in mind that x does not always use cosine and y does not always use sine. Sometimes they're flipped, but one thing we do know for sure is that cosine is always adjacent over hypotenuse 
and sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. That's always true. And if I plug 10 sine 50 in my calculator, then I'll get a speed of 7.66 meters per second, and there's the y component. So that number is going to be what I plug in for vy right here, 7.66. V final, do we know V final at that point right there? And the answer is yes for the y-axis. And the reason I'm saying the y-axis is because, again, I'm still talking about the y-axis. And at the peak height, velocity is always zero, or at least the y-axis. X-axis is not zero. We'll talk about that later. But V final will be zero. We know that. Acceleration, we already said it. It's going to be negative 9.8. Time is unknown. And delta y is what I'm solving for because I wanted the peak height and delta y is height. So notice I have three of the five, which means I can plug into one of my kinematic variables. And it's going to be the one that doesn't have time in it, which means I'm using this equation. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X, in this case, delta Y. And now I can just plug in the variables I know and start solving for delta Y. V final is going to be 0 squared equals 7.66 squared plus 2 times A is negative 9.8 times delta Y. And now I just got to start simplifying this. On the left, we have 0. On the right, that's going to be about 58.7 minus 19.6 delta y. And then if I want to solve for delta y, I'm going to add 19.6 delta y to both sides equals 58.7. And then we'll just divide by 19.6. And that will give me an answer of about 2.99 meters. You could round up to three if you wanted. I don't really care. But there's our answer. There's the peak height for this problem. And like I said, I can ask multiple questions. The next question I'll ask, part B, is how long is the ball in the air? So in other words, I'm asking for the time of flight. One thing that you have to know is we basically have to start the problem all over because whenever you use these kinematic variables and filling out this chart right here that you see on my screen right now, that only works for two points in time. And what I mean by that is, for the first problem, part A, we looked at this is point one and this is point two. Now we're switching point two to be over here when the ball hits the ground. And because of that, we have to start the y-axis over again. Most of the variables will be the same, but some of them may be different. So now looking at the y-axis, V initial, that did not change because my initial point is still 7.66 for the y-axis. V final is no longer zero. The reason why is, if you look at this picture, we don't know the speed at point two. We knew the speed at the top, the peak of flight was zero. We do not know the speed when it hits the ground. A lot of people will say that the speed of the ball is zero when it hits the ground. You people are wrong because of course the ball's not moving, but we're talking about the speed as it hits the ground. And we don't know that. So V final is unknown. Acceleration did not change, still negative 9.8. Time is what I'm solving for, so I probably don't know that. And delta y, well, let's put it this way. If we don't know delta y, that's only two of the five, we can't solve for time. So I'm really hoping we know delta y, and I do. I don't think you do. Why don't you look at the picture and try and think about it? What is delta y for this problem? Did you figure it out? The answer is delta y is the final height which is right there, minus the initial height, which is right there. In other words, we're starting where we ended. The delta y is zero. The change in height is zero because we're not talking about the height in the middle. That was for another problem. So since delta y is zero, it means I do have three of the five and I can solve for time. And I'm gonna be using the equation that doesn't have v final in it. That's this one, delta y or delta x equals v initial times time plus one half at squared. And now we just gotta plug in the variables. So delta y, zero, equals 7.66t plus one half times negative 9.8 times t squared. And now simplifying this, we're gonna get zero equals 7.66t minus 4.9t squared. And now the question is how do we solve for t? You've got two options. Number one is, if you know how to factor, we can factor. If you don't, we gotta use quadratic formula. 
Luckily, I do know how to factor this. All you gotta do is factor out a t, and when you do that, you're left with 7.66 minus 4.9t. And this is algebra, so if this is confusing, just ask about it in the comments section, I'll reply to you. But assuming you understand this, then I'm gonna continue. We basically get two solutions. One solution is t equals zero, and the other solution is 7.66 minus 4.9t equals zero. You'll notice I set both factors equal to zero. Again, that's from algebra. Now, I think it's safe to say we can eliminate this answer. It makes no sense why we're getting zero as an answer. And whenever you see a ridiculous answer, you should cross it out, especially because the other time is gonna be the real answer. So I add 4.9t to both sides, 7.66 equals 4.9t, and then I'll divide both sides by 4.9. And I will get a final time of t equals 1.56 seconds. And there we go. That's the answer for part B. You may notice we have not needed the x-axis at all yet, but we will for part C. For part C, I'm gonna ask you how far did the ball travel? And so if we look back at our picture, I'm basically asking what's this distance right here in green? And to do that, we certainly need the x-axis. So if I say for the x-axis, there's only one equation. It's vx equals delta x over t. I already know most of these variables. We said a while ago that vx was 6.43 when we used Sokotoa. So 6.43 equals delta x, which is the distance I'm solving for, divided by the time. We do know the time. It was the answer from the last problem, 1.56. So 1.56 goes in the denominator. And finally, if I want to solve for delta x, it's pretty easy. Just multiply 1.56 on both sides. Yeah, you'll notice this one was a lot easier. So that's nice. And we'll get a final answer of 10.0 meters. So there we go. That's a lot of good practice problems for you. Hopefully this made sense. If not, you should probably rewatch the video at a later point in time. and It'll probably make more sense then. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.